Hello and welcome to this video. This is going to be a video series where I am building a balancing robot like this. But first, let's talk about a change in the video format. So usually I've made videos where I would complete a project and then I would like film a recap of the project and basically just share like just share the complete project with some of my thoughts uh, along the way. But the, the, the issue with that is that I, all this, I, I basically skip all the learning experiences and all the challenges. I just come to the, I just show the solution every time. And I think that's wrong. I think it's better if I can show all the, all the small challenges that I have to overcome to like get to the end result. So this is going to be a, a different style of video where instead of showing the end result, I'm going to show the, like the, the entire process. So I'm going to be showing like this project isn't done yet. So I'll, I will show the, uh, the work in progress and I will talk about what my thoughts are and how I'm thinking about solving the problem because that's basically where all the fun is. It's it's the development. It's the mental cha mental challenge. Um, so it's gonna be a change in video format. Um, another reason for changing the video format is that last the the way I've done it until now is that I would shoot a bunch of video, then I would do the narration and the editing and all that, and it takes so much time. So. Instead, I can just be in front of the camera like this and uh, like do everything at once, and then I just have to like do simple editing. What this is going to mean in the end is that I can create what I think is better videos with less work and therefore more often. So I think it's a win-win-win situation. With that out of the way, let's talk about the project. So. I'm going to be building a two-wheeled balancing robot. And if you know the Segway, the Segway robot, oh, it's not a robot, it's like a vehicle that you can you stand on and then you can lean around. And the, the cool thing is that it's balancing on two wheels. So I will, I will attempt to build something similar. As you can see, I've already, I've already cheated a bit and made some uh, hardware. So it's it's basically a 3D printed frame with a like a sheet of aluminum on the back. There are two motors and some tires with 3D printed uh, wheel hubs. So this is gonna be like the base uh, where I'll be yeah trying to build in some uh, balancing stability. Uh, I have intentionally avoided all tutorials about like how these kinds of vehicles are made because like the fun in this the, the fun part of making this kind of a vehicle is the mental mental challenge like it's driving this thing around when it's done is probably going to be extremely boring but designing it that's where the fun is so instead of cheating and like just listening to a tutorial, I've decided to not watch any tutorials and basically figure things out myself. Okay, so on the motors, there are encoders. And these encoders, if you use them properly, you can use those to do position control on the motors. So what that basically means is that I'm going to be, I'll be able to control the speed of the motors more precisely. Another thing I know that I'm going to need is a gyroscope with an accelerometer. Inertial measurement unit. Um, I've bought a bunch of those that I'll use to measure the, the angle of the, of the vehicle. And then using some PID control, the goal is to make this balance. And then in the end we can add a radio control system such that we are able to basically drive it around. The first thing I've done is written a simple program which is able to read the quadratic, quadratic uh, encoder. 
So when I rotate the motor, the encoder is going to turn. And as you can see, this number on my screen is updating. And this is basically counting all the ripple, like all the encoder pulses. I've also set up this potentiometer. And if I can turn on the power, I can actually control the speed. The goal is now to set up a PID controller. So instead of me setting the PWM with, with the potentiometer, I want to select the set point. And then the Arduino, the encoder and the ESC will try to match that set point. I will be programming my own PID controller for this project. So therefore, to keep things simple, I will start by doing just a simple P controller. How does that work? Well, PID control actually stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. So what is this? Well, this is basically three different ways of controlling a system. When we talk about PID control, the goal of the system is to eliminate any error. So you basically have your set point and your measured value. And the goal is to, as quickly as possible, minimize the error to zero. Here's a quick update. I have now written some code that reads the encoder and, translate it, and translates it to a the RPM count. So when I turn this potentiometer, the motor turns. And when I give full throttle, you can see it says close to 400 RPM, just, just around 400 RPM, which is also the spec for uh, the motor at 12 volts. I am kind of debating with myself whether or not to use a running average for the RPM count. So let me explain. If I set this to this, the setting where it's just about to turn the, turn the wheel, like this. As you can see, if I look at the data, it's jumping all over the place. So let's pause it. And as you can see, some, some places it says zero, some places it says 10, and some places it says five. And that's because I'm, I'm, it's, it's super simple to code. Like I'm just taking a time interval and counting how many steps, how many impulses did the encoder send. And then from that, I'm measuring the uh, RPM at a given time, time interval. If, if, if I do a running average on these numbers, then the reaction speed of my system is basically going to decrease. So it's like, what do you want? Do you want a fast and responsive system that is vulnerable to jitteriness, or do you want a sluggish system? That's basically what I'm, I'm getting from this. Um, but I think it's, it's definitely worth trying and. Uh, also trying it without and then seeing what the difference is because I don't know, I've never done a PID loop. So it's, I think it's a matter of trying. I'm looking at a window of numbers. So let's say first it's going to be five, then five and four. And I'm basically moving along and only averaging what's inside this frame. Then the question becomes, does it even help and no, it doesn't help at all. It actually makes everything worse. And that's pretty log logical if you, if you think about it, because what I'm doing is that I'm adding delay to the system. So the response times, it's basically being increased. And uh, what, this, what that means is that I get a lot of oscillations. Here you can see how the system reacts when I am doing a moving average on the last 15 measurements. And as you can see, when I change the set point, the system is really unstable. 
and it tends to over and undershoot continuously and it has a really hard time of get, ma maintaining a steady velocity. The proportional part of the controller is now complete and as you can see on the screen I am plotting the set point against the measured value. So as I turn the potentiometer the system is going to react. The blue line represents the set point and the red line represents the, the actual motor speed. I've noticed that the ESCs have a dead band in the middle. So when you look at the graph, when I change direction, you can see, you can see the dead band, it's very obvious. So the wheel is now moving one direction and when I change direction, it's gonna be very obvious on the graph that there is a flat zone right when the wheel is changing direction. As I'm filming this, I just saw on YouTube that I've just hit 901 subscribers. And that is, that's such extreme speed that my subscribers have increased because it's only nine years since I first started my YouTube career. So like 100 subscribers per year, that's insane. I also have about 100,000 views. If you spread 100,000 views over nine years, that's more than 30 views per day. That's insane. I have now written some code that does the dead band compensation. And as you can see, as I change direction, it has a very sharp drop, which is basically the system that's skipping the middle frequencies. As you can see from this paper, I have made some, some thoughts about the PID control. Initially, I had an idea that PID control would be pretty complicated, but as you can see, the, the equation is, is, is really quite simple. Um, I'm currently only using the, the P term but um, adding the last two, two terms is going to be very simple. So I will start by just adding these two terms, trying to tune them somewhat okay, and then I'll see how the system responds. I've now added the I and the D term to the PID controller, and it's working rather well. So this video was all about making the PID controller that controls the two DC motors in the balancing robot. In the next video will I focus on reading some data from the IMU that's going to be mounted in the, in the robot. So that's reading the accelerometers and the, the, the gyro and then trying to do some balancing. That's going to be pretty exciting.